Okay, here is warm up number 48. Number one, how long would it take for $200 to be worth $570 if compounded monthly at 6% interest? Okay, so um, let's start setting this up. We're compounding monthly, so that means n is gonna be 12, okay? And that also means we're using the, the, the compound formula um, that features the n's. So here is the formula, okay? A is my starting amount, so that's gonna be 200. 570 is the finishing amount, that goes in the Y position. The rate is 6%, don't forget to write that as a decimal, so 0 0.06. My N is 12, so there's a 12 down there, there's also a 12 up here. Um, what we don't know is the time, so I'll leave that as T. So we're trying to solve this for T, okay? So step one, I'm going to divide by 200. Or you, you could actually do this later, but I'm doing it right now. So let's see, I've got my calculator right here. And that's 2.85 then. Okay, I'm also going to um, start simplifying um, the contents of this uh, parentheses. And gonna keep my, my numbers in my calculator here as I go. So. I'll start with 0 0.06, I'm starting with that fraction, dividing by 12, and adding that to 1. Okay, so that's pretty simple. 0 0.05 to the 12t. Okay, at this point, I need to use logs in order to isolate the variable. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite this in log form. So my base is 1.005. So that goes in that position, okay? The exponent is gonna get isolated, so that's gonna be over here, and the 2.85 is gonna be the contents of the log, okay? So now, um, now I've got it this far, and this side of the equation, I can simplify in my calculator. Um, and once I get that, I'm gonna divide by 12 to get my final answer, okay? So I'm gonna use change of base formula because I, I have to use base 10 on my calculator. So I'm gonna put write this in my calculator as log 2.85 divided by log of 1.005, okay? So log of 2.85, don't forget to close the parentheses, dividing that by the log of 1.005. Uh, okay, so there's the left side, it's about 209.987. Okay, and then the last step, divide by 12. So I'm using this whole decimal in my calculator even though I didn't write the whole thing down. Okay, and now I'm gonna round to, ask to the nearest hundredth of a year, so I'm gonna call that 17.50 is what it's gonna round up to in term, terms of hundredths. And that's that many years. Okay, all right. Um, next up, how long would it take for $300 to be worth $400 if compounded monthly? We're compounding monthly again. Um, so again, N is going to equal 12, 12 months in a year. Again, we're using this same formula. Okay, uh, beginning amount is 300, finishing amount is 400. Rate is 7%, that's 0 .07 as a decimal. 12 is n, only thing we're missing is the t. So we're gonna simplify this pretty much the same way as we did in the last one. So I'll divide both sides by 300 first. So those will cancel, and then this is gonna reduce to 4 thirds, so one and a third, or 1.33, right? Or 1.3 repeating, maybe I'll just call it that. Okay, and then let me start simplifying the uh, fraction here, 0 0.07 divided by 12. I'm gonna add one to that. Okay, so I've got, this is about 1.005, well, I'll make it exact because I've got a repeating decimal there. I'll see. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this in log form. Um, so my base is gonna be this decimal that I have inside the parentheses. I still got in my calculator. The contents are gonna be the 1.3 repeating. And actually, I think I'm gonna just write that as 4 thirds, um, just to make it easier to put into the calculator. Okay, so I've got it like that. So uh, in my calculator, I'm gonna do log of 4 thirds over the log of that decimal, okay? So log of 4 
thirds. Yeah, so don't, like, I wouldn't want to just round that to 1.3 as you go, because it'll throw your answer off a little bit, okay? And close those parentheses, and then I'm putting that over the log of um, this decimal. So um, I've got that decimal right there. It's my last answer on the calculator. So I'm going to hit second and then the negative button down here, and it's probably hard to see, but it says ANS right above that negative symbol. So if I do that, then it's going to use that last decimal, the whole thing, without me having to um, retype it. Okay, and I'll put that in. And so 49.46 roughly is what that left side rounds to. And then I'm still going to divide by 12 to get my final answer. So keeping my decimal there, working on my last decimal. And I've got, I'm going to the nearest hundredth of a year, so 4.12 years then. Okay. All right, the next uh, problem, we've got some natural logs here. This is 2 times the natural log of x. Okay, so um, I've, since I've got two different logs, I want to combine them together. But before I do that, I have to use the power rule so that to get rid of that coefficient, get that coefficient out of the way. Oh, and I've got a coefficient here, so with both of these. So I'm going to rewrite the first one of, as log of x to the second. I'm oh, sorry, natural log of x to the second, and natural log of 2 to the third. Okay, and 2 to the third is 8, so I could simplify that a little bit further. Okay, and now I can combine these logs. They have the same base. They're both a log with base E, really, is what natural log is. Okay, and when you're subtracting, you are going to take the contents and divide them. So I'll do x squared over 8 when I combine this into one log. Okay, and I like to use uh, parentheses right that just so we can there's no confusion that um, 8 isn't the the uh, base there okay now I've got it to this point and next up I need to convert this into exponential form so you have to know that l natural log means log base e you don't necessarily have to write it like I did but I'm just trying to explain here okay and now I'm going to convert this into um, uh, to uh, exponential form so e to the third is going to equal the contents of the log. So e to the third is going to equal that fraction. Okay, And I'm solving for x here, so I would multiply both sides by 8. Oops, 8 e to the third equals x squared. Okay, um, At some point I'm going to have to put this in my calculator and then I'll take the square root. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do that now. 8 and then I've got this e to the third, or the e, e raised to an exponent button is right down here with the natural log. So I'm going to hit second and then L, ln to get that. And actually, you know what? I, I think this is fine the way I typed it in, but maybe I'll do e to the third and then multiply by 8 just to make sure that it's not raising the 8 to the third. Let me try that again. I'll do natural log of e to the third times 8. Okay, I'm okay. I just want to make sure my calculator didn't get confused there. So now I've got about 160.68. Okay, I'm going to take the, um, the square root of both sides now. So I'm going to take the square root of that last decimal I had, and I've got about 12.68. Okay, and if you we were just looking at this, you would take do the plus minus because you always do that when you take the square root of both sides of an equation. But the contents of a log can't be negative, so that means I'm only using the positive root there. Okay, so about 12.68. All right, last one. We're going to find the inverse of this function, so I'm going to switch the x and the y first off. Then I'm going to solve for y. So I'm trying to get the y by itself. Let's start by subtracting 3 from both sides. Okay, and now I'm going to have to put this in exponential form, um, or sorry, in log form to, uh, to isolate the, uh, the exponent there. Okay, so I've got my base is e. Hey, log base e, that's my natural log, right? Um, the 4y is going to get isolated, and the x minus 3 is going to be the contents of the log. Put that in parentheses just to, so it's clear that the negative 3 is, is inside the log as well. Okay, And yeah, let's go ahead and write that as the natural log of x minus 3. 
equals 4y, because that's what log base e is, right? OK, um, and we're isolating y. We're almost there. Just divide by 4. Sometimes I see people just divide the contents of a log by 4. But yeah, we're dividing the whole equation by 4. So it should look something like that. And then I'm just going to put it back, back in function notation. And there we go. There's the inverse of that function. Okay, that's it for today. See you next time.